Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Hello there, everybody. This is Jay here with the GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. So we got some really cool stuff to talk about this episode, so let's just jump right in. So I've talked a couple times on here about a little show called Castlevania. I've talked in the past of, you know, I haven't really played the games. I remember, I want to say, as a kid playing one or two of them. And then being rather challenging. I remember that. You know, they were usually 2D side-scrollers. It was, I want to say in the games, usually it was Simon Belmont taking on Dracula and his horde of monsters. Um, I want to say that even the originals probably just took place in Dracula's castle. Um, As the game series progressed, there was um, a lot more games. I want to say they might even eventually stop focusing on just Simon Belmont. I want to say. Um, And... Yeah, like I said, the original games were really challenging, really difficult. I think most of the games stayed uh, 2D side-scrollers. The later, more recent iterations might have made the jump to 3D, but like I said, I haven't really played almost any of the games except maybe like the first one or two. So it's been a very long time. And uh, the company, company Konami has been behind, I think them since the beginning. They used to be on Nintendo. I'm not sure if they're on Nintendo now or PlayStation. I I just really don't know. But, um, you know, it's a very popular series. Um, It's, you know, I want to say generations of gamers have played it because it's been around, I want to say, about 20, 30 years. Now, the first time we saw a Belmont in an animated series, and this I have not talked about before, and I just started watching recently again online, is a show called Captain N the Game Master. So, for those that don't know, they did, you know, around the 80s, early 90s, they did uh, first Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which originally had the Legends of the Cartoon series, which did really well at first, but then didn't do so well when Adventures of Link came out, which if you've played that game, you understand why. And they decided to do it, like, uh, later they did a Mario Brothers 3 cartoon, they did Super Mario World, and they did a show called Captain N the Game Master where they had Summon Belmont in it. But Summon Belmont, uh, I don't think they did him justice. He's kind of like, you know, a jockey fool who, you know, didn't really know what he was doing and kept trying to get with this character that the other character was trying to get with. It was a really weird show, you know. And after that, we haven't really had anything Castlevania-related until... Well, I want to say they might have shown up in one of the more recent um, Super Smash Bros. games, but I'm not really sure. I didn't really play the last one too much. But anyways, so uh, Netflix did about, oh God, one or two years ago, a Castlevania cartoon series. As I have said in the past, the first episode, the first season, only had four episodes, they're only about 20-something minutes each, um, and I'm not even sure if Netflix believed much in the show at the time, but it, you know, fans really, really liked it. It did really, really well. It, I think, blew a lot of people away, because, like, this was, like, the kind of Castlevania they've been waiting for, where, you know, we get to meet, you know, Trevor Belmont, we get to meet Sypha, we got to get to meet Alucard toward the end, uh, Dracula, and see why he's, you know, so angry at humanity. It's a very violent show, but it has, you know, mixes of comedy and drama and some really cool things happen. And uh, season two, uh, you know, they, just, they they announced pretty quickly. And they said it was going to be double the episodes. It's going to be eight episodes instead of four. I've talked about here on here in the past where, you know, uh, it's second season. I got to watch 
I really, really liked it. There were a lot of really cool twists and turns there. I think eight episodes was better because it gave them a chance, you know, tell more around the story, to expand on the story, to kind of look at some, you know, different aspects of the story. We got to meet a lot of new characters, which were, you know, uh, Dracula's generals. We got to see more of Sypha, more of Trevor Belmont, more of his family history. Um, we got to see, like, you know, more Alucard, you know, and that he kind of had a little inward battle going on. We got to see that uh, Dracula had two human generals, which uh, both were alchemists, I think is the right word. I want to say that may not be the right word, though. They might have been, um, if they weren't alchemists, they might have been, um, well, they had some kind of power where they could bring back the dead, right? And they could kind of help make Dracula's army. So I don't know if alchemist is actually the right word. They might have used a different word on the episodes on the show in season two. And season two just came to a close. And so there had been kind of some rumblings of, hey, a season three might be coming from one of the voice actors. But there wasn't really anything written in stone. It's just like, hey, this may happen. Fans hoped it would happen. Heck, I would like to see it happen. Well, there's some good news on the Castlevania front. So just this last week, Netflix finally, finally said, okay, Castlevania is getting a season three. So it is happening. It is going to be coming. Um, I honestly think how season two went, it makes sense to do a third season. Um, and really all we know so far, because this is just an announcement, it's been on, you know, like uh, Facebook and Twitter and, you know, and social medias and things like that. It's kind of like how some of these other previous ones goes, as I've said on here before, you know, we know that we're going to get a season three. We don't know if it's going to be four episodes, eight episodes, 12 episodes, 16 episodes. We don't know any of that. We don't even really know when it's going to happen, but it's probably safe to say mm, probably sometime next year. And uh, yeah, like I said, how the last season ended, um, it was definitely a little, there were a few surprises there I didn't see coming. I was like, okay, I didn't think they were going to do that. It kind of made sense for some things to happen, but it was still kind of surprising. Um, Alucard is kind of like, you know, left, he's kind of like, you know, not sure what to do next. Um, you know, Trevor Belmont and Sypha decide to go on their own, you know, and, uh, see what's, you know, what they can do next. Uh, so they decide to work to continue working together. Um, and of course, as I've said before, one of, uh, you know, Count Dracula's generals kind of decides to start their own little thing going on. So there's going to be that happening, but, um, yeah, I think it's really cool that they've officially said this. So, like, when you hear it usually officially, it's okay, it means it's going to happen. It means you are going to see it happen. It's, the show has been canceled, so that's great. Um, and on the same note, at least how season two ended, I don't know exactly they could do past a season three. Now, mind you, again, like I said, I haven't played many of the games. So, I believe in a number of the games, Dracula does come back a couple of times. So, that so what we saw in season two... Um, doesn't mean that we're not going to see him anymore. I mean, remember, he's a very powerful being. So I'm curious to see what season three is going to do. I'd love to know how many episodes there's going to be. Um, and I would like a potential release date. Because even when I said last week, you know, with Disenchantment, we at least know, hey, it's going to be 2019, 2020, and 2021. We at least know this. Whereas with um, this, all we know is they're doing it. So Konami, it's a good start. Thank you for letting us know this is officially happening. But sooner than later, I would prefer to know more, right? I'd prefer to know, okay, when, where, you know, how many episodes, uh, maybe even a basic idea of the plot. I'd like to know all that stuff. But to be fair, um, it's probably, you know, likely that, hey, they maybe they haven't started work on it yet. Maybe. It's a possibility. So, um, so yeah, so that's really, really cool news. Um, like, and I, I will say again, if you haven't watched this show, I would highly recommend you check it out on Netflix. Both seasons are on there now. Again, they're only about 20-something minutes each. Um, it's Be prepared, though. It is going to be violent. There's lots of violence, so just be prepared for that. If you um, aren't into lots of violence, it may not be the show for you, or maybe you don't want to watch it by yourself. It's just a suggestion. But, um, but yeah, like I've heard really good things from fans across the board about they've done a real good job with the, you know, the characters and the story and things like that. And, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen next, and 
where they're going to go next. And heck, for that matter, what evil are they going to take on next? Is it going to be Dracula? Is it going to be someone else? Is there going to be some new evil that comes up in his place? As kind of previous cartoon shows have done, if you get rid of a main evil, it doesn't mean there's no more evil. It just means another evil steps in to take his place. So, yeah, that's all I have for that news of Season 3 so far. And as more news comes out about it, I'll be more than happy to bring it here for all of you. So we're going to take ourselves a short little break now, and we'll be back in a few moments with more sci-fi news. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hey there, everybody. This is Jay back for more sci-fi news. So um, the next thing I'm going to talk about um, has kind of an interesting history going on around it. Um, it's a movie that I think has been talked about coming out for a while, and I think fans have wanted to see it for a while. Um, originally, there was even talk at one time that Sokka Baron Cohen, who has been in movies like Sweeney Todd, and uh, he did like Borat, and he's been in actually a number of films, really was going to play this character. He was going to play Freddie Mercury. And really, at the time when you looked at him, it's like, hey, he looks like Freddie Mercury. I could see him playing for Freddie Mercury. We know he can sing. But uh, something happened along the way where I think one of the bandmates, still living bandmates, was like, yeah, no, he's not going to do that. I'm not going to let him do that. That's just kind of how it went. It's just like, well, no mas. So, that for, so it seemed like for a while, and I want to say even a few years ago, that we were going to get this movie, we we're going to get to see this story, and it just kind of fell apart upon itself. In the last year or two, um, it kind of gained some new life and was coming around again. And if you're wondering what this film is, if the anticipation is killing you, this movie is Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, what is Bohemian Rhapsody? Well, it's basically a Queen biopic. It really more focuses on Freddie Mercury, you know, and uh, it's got Remy Malik playing uh, Freddie Mercury, which I have to just applaud. I think it's an amazing casting choice. I wasn't sure about it at first. So like, you know what? I haven't seen Rami Malek in too much. Yeah, he was in Twilight Breaking uh, Breaking Dawn Part 2. Yeah, he's on Mr. Robot, which I've heard is a really good show. But I don't really person. I didn't really personally know much of what he was in. So it's like, well, I don't know if he's a good choice or not. I just don't. You know, this is the reality. Um, there's a really cool cameo in this movie with Mike Myers that I will get into. Uh, he plays a character that I think it was really, really fun. But so this movie basically follows Queen from their start, from their humble beginnings, like, you know, their rise to the top all the way to, um, them playing at Live Aid. It's about a two something hour movie. Like I want to say almost two and a half hours, but it didn't drag on. It really didn't. It was one of those movies where you're like, man, you just, it kind of, gri- it was a, one of those biopics where it gripped me and it, and I just didn't let go and I didn't want it to. I'm like, I just loved how they did the movie. Like, uh, Rami Malik does a great job looking like Freddie Mercury. He can sing really, really well. You know, they have a bunch of scenes where they, like, uh, they do a bunch of really great songs. Um, it was kind of cool to see how the band originally came together. It was really kind of cool to see that, uh, to see a bit of, you know, Freddie Mercury's, uh, you know, home life, uh, you know, where he was going um, at first, you know, how the band came together. There's some really cool scenes about, like, you know, they do We Will Rock You. Um, and it also, it does look at, like, you know, Freddie Mercury's sexuality. It just does. It's kind of a part of the story. And it's really cool to just see what I... God, there was so much good about this movie. Where do I even begin? So... 
It starts like, like there's one really cool moment, and I talked about Mike Myers, where he plays one of their uh, producers for one of the record labels at one point. And uh, the big moment comes where they do, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, the actual song. And, uh, you know, the record company and, uh, you know, Mike Myers' characters believe, character believes that, well, the song is too long. It's a seven minute song. There's no way people are going to listen to it. It's too long. Uh, it's not going to do well. It's going to bomb. This is what's going to happen. They pretty much refuse to play it. They refuse to make it like, you know, the top song, one of the top songs on the record. Uh, and he's just like, no radio station's ever going to play it, right? This is what's going to happen. And there's a funny history about this song where it, at first, didn't really do that well. It didn't, you know, and a little movie in the 90s that Mike Myers happened to be in and, you know, makes uh, makes a joke about it, which is basically the gist of it is he says, you know, well, you know, what do you think? Someday kids are going to be listening to this in, this car, in their cars, head banging. I mean, I don't see that happening. If you've seen Wayne's World, you know, that's exactly what happens. And so the little history of that song is, you know, Mike Myers, when he, they were getting ready to shoot Wayne's World, was like, I want to do this song. And they're like, eh, we don't know if you shoot that song. I don't think it's going to do well. And I think he got to a point I've heard where he was ready to walk. He's like, you either let me do Bohemian Rhapsody in this scene and trust me or no more movie for me. So they're like, okay, fine. You can do Bohemian Rhapsody in that scene when you're all in the Mirthmobile and listening to it. Fine, you can do it. Go ahead. And a few funny things happened. One is it's, I think, in my opinion, one of the more iconic scenes from the movie where Wayne and Garth and all his friends are listening to this song and singing to it and, you know, headbanging and just having an absolute blast. And what it also did was it put this song back on the charts. That scene in the mo in this movie put this song back on the charts. I want to, I don't know if it shot it to number one, but it put it on the charts. People were like going, listening to, they were listening to this song again. They were rocking out to this song again. And I think it actually helped the popularity of the song. So there's, so we get to see like a number of the scenes in this movie where, you know, how Queen like, you know, comes about, how they, you know, like, like hit after hit and, you know, where they're getting bigger and bigger. Um, eventually it comes out to like, you know, where, yeah, his sexuality and what's going on with him and his orientation. Um, there is a part in this film, you know, with the whole AIDS thing going on. So that is a part of the story. It's not a huge part, but it's there. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of really good music. There's a lot of really cool moments. I mean, I think Live Aid is one of the most amazing parts in the whole movie. And really, like, you know, even though they don't necessarily have a lot in common, this movie reminded me of Ray and just a sense of how well of a musical, of, of a biopic it was how well it flowed, how it didn't drag on, even though it's a little bit long. They chose the cast very well. They just chose the way the movie was going to go from start to finish really, really well. It flowed wonderfully. There were parts where I just laughed. I loved like certain parts of doing. There were parts that just like, you know, thought were amazing. There were parts that really stood out to me. Um, the scene like where they're first coming out with We Will Rock You was really, really cool because they show, of course, there were moments with the band where, you know, like some people, would, it wasn't full credit. It was like, hey, the person who wrote the song got credit, person who did this got credit, person who did that got credit. And it was kind of a, something that was an issue with the band in the early days, it seemed, as this movie shows. And so, um, <clears throat> so what happens is, um, you know, like they're kind of like arguing, like, you know, about like whatever. And then like, you know, they start, they, like the guy starts the guitar rift for, uh, you know, or starts like, you know, doing the look, because like they want to find when it comes to uh, We Will Rock You, they want to be like, hey, let's get the, like the audience involved. We want the audience like, you know, to like, you know, when they're listening to this, we want them to have something to do, right? So that's kind of their point, like their idea behind this. And we get to see some cool moments like that with a number of different songs. And, um, you know, we get to see the band like, you know, kind of like, you know, have it falling out for a while and get back together. And, you know, like the character Freddie Mercury really gross, you know, and kind of like accepts his fate toward the end. He just kind of does. He's like, hey, you know what? I know that I'm going to, you know, not be here forever, but I also know that I want to enjoy the time I have left. Right. And yeah, it was to me, it was it was one of the best biopics I've seen since Ray. And I just keep bringing that one up because that one stands out to me really, really well right now. It doesn't have everything going for it like Ray did. You know, like they didn't like, like Freddie Mercury didn't get to choose. Oh, yeah, I want this guy to be me. That's just not what happened. But yeah, but it's a really, really good song, a movie, I mean, and you don't really necessarily have to be a fan of Queen to enjoy it. I don't think so. I know I'm a fan of the band. I have like and what's really funny about Queen to me is a lot of their songs you probably heard. And you may not have known you have heard them. If you've seen Happy Feet, there's a lot of Queen songs in there. There's a couple of Queen songs in there you wouldn't know. That's just the reality. You know, there's some songs you're like, I didn't even know Queen did this song. That's just the way it is. Because I'm a kid of the 80s and 90s, okay? Um, sadly, when I came on this earth, 
Queen was still around, but they just like, you know, they weren't, um, they were kind of like, you know, it just wasn't like growing up. I didn't hear Queen everywhere. It's just the truth, you know? And, um, until of course, Wayne's world, you know, but, uh, but yeah, like it's a band that you've probably heard their songs, probably more of their songs than you would think. Cause it's a really iconic band. They have a lot of really iconic songs and they've been in a lot of movies and TV shows and things like that. You know, Knight's Tale has some Queen songs. Uh, like I said, Happy Feet has some Queen songs. Uh, Heck, um, like uh, the Mighty Ducks movies. Mighty Ducks 2 has a Queen song. So they're they're everywhere. You've probably heard them before. And I would highly recommend this movie. I think it's just an amazing, wonderful movie. I have a hunch it's going to do well. And like I said, it's just, it was probably one of the better musical music biopics or biopics I've seen in a while. They did everything right here, and I would just highly recommend it. It was really just, you know, Bravo, very, very good. I had a lot of fun watching it, and I would gladly watch it again. So we're going to take ourselves another short little break here, and we'll be back in a few moments with more sci-fi news. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey there, everybody. This is Jay back for some more sci-fi news. So this is something I haven't really done on here before, but I think I'm going to maybe start doing it is um, I'm going to bring a book to this sci-fi podcast. And it's actually from a series of books. And it's a book that I originally just stumbled upon. Uh, I want to say a couple of months ago, maybe even earlier this year. So and it's and it's something that's been re-released recently. It's something that is not necessarily a brand new book. And like I said, it's a series of four books. I've had a chance to read three of them now. Uh, well, actually, that's wrong. I have only read two of them so far. I have a third I hope to read. So, so there was this book that came out, I want to say in the 50s or 60s, by Ruth Finn Todd uh, called Space Cat. And so what the first book focuses on is uh, there's this cat, like, you know, who sneaks into this uh, little, like, you know, rocket station um, and, you know, sneaks on, like, starts working around there and hanging out there and getting taken care of there. And it thinks it's in charge of the place. Um, It's not, but this is what it thinks. Uh, The cat gets the name Flyball. Um, It was originally, you know, like, just a stray that they kind of take it in. you know, it gets Captain uh, Fred, I believe, is, you know, what uh, he um, starts, you know, kind of working along with. And in the first mo- uh, book, they go to the moon. And, you know, it's like where he has a space suit on and they travel there. And there's like, uh, and there's parts like, you know, where there, he's in zero G and they see some interesting animals and creatures and things like that. Right. So that's what the first book mainly focuses on. The second book is called uh, Space Cat Visits Venus, where, you know, uh, Captain Fred and Flyball go and visit Venus and, you know, and see a bunch of more interesting creatures and beings and things like that in their spacesuits and stuff like that. So that was a book I sadly didn't get a chance to read yet. Um, I wanted to, but I just didn't get a chance to. And then there's a third book in this series I just recently read this last week, and this is called Space Cat Meets Mars. So what happens from the first book to the third book is, after, no, I mean from the second book to the third book, forgive me is, um, you know, uh, they're coming back to Earth, uh, like, they they are starting to lose power, and they have to kind of, like, you know, emergency land on Mars, and they find out during the day that, uh, at least in this book, in the world of this book series, that during the day, there is oxygen on Mars, meaning, 
you don't have to go around in a space suit, right? But it's only during the day. Yeah, like, you know, if you don't get back to the ship before nightfall, you know, it's going to all turn into like, you know, not oxygen anymore. And it's going to be really dangerous. And so, uh, and they have to, they had to land because like, like their uh, engines are gunked up. So while, you know, Captain Fred is trying to, you know, uh, clean up the engines, uh, Flyball decides just to explore around the planet, see what he can see. There's, you know, giant mushrooms, there's uh, giant bugs, there's uh, weird metallic mice that he tries to catch and play with. And he finds out, well, I can't really eat them, but I guess I can play around with them. Uh, one of the days, because they're there for a couple of days where they're trying to clean up the, uh, well, he's trying to clean up the engine. And uh, one of the days he sees, hey, there's this weird little, like, you know, fish that are, like, in this, like, ocean, like, this little, like, lake, and they're kind of blowing bubbles at him. And then uh, one day he runs into a really strange thing, something that he didn't expect to see there, something that really blows his mind, and it's uh, another cat. It's a cat on Mars, if you can believe that. Uh, it's a female cat. Her name is Mufa, if memory serves me. And, you know, and he finds out, like, wow, like well, there's, so there's technically another me here. I didn't expect to see something like me here at all. He saw it a few days before, but he thought it was just his eyes playing tricks on him, right? And, uh, yeah, so, like, you know, he explores the planet a little bit. Um, him and Mufa go on a few adventures together. She shows him how to catch the fish there. Um, she tells him, you know, that, hey, I think I'm the last of my kind here. I don't think there's any more of me around, sadly. I think I'm the last one. Uh, there's one point where a storm comes that uh, that Flyball and his uh, human didn't see coming, and she helps uh, helps them by uh, you know having them hide in a cave where they can you know there's plenty of oxygen in there and they can be safe until they ride out the storm right. And as the story comes to a close, you know, and the and the uh, engine gets ungunked up, you know, uh, Flyball is pretty much saying, like you know to his, to his master, he kind of like meows, saying his master's like, all right, fine, we'll take Mufa with us. So at the end of the story, you know, uh, Mufa and Flyball are going to be in the ship with uh, Fred, and I believe they're heading back to Earth now is what's going to happen. And um, I have to say, you know, I really like this series of books so far. They're like, they're have, they have some really cool illustrations as the story goes along. They're about, you know, 80 to 100 something pages usually, so they're not superbly long. They're mostly for more like young readers, but um, yeah, they they have fascinated me so far. You know, it's, I don't think it's just because I'm a cat person, but I've really liked them so far. I've had a lot of fun reading them. Um, it's kind of interesting where like, you know, I, I, you never really know what's going to happen next. It's just the way it goes. Um, Flyball is a really cool character. Uh, you know, like uh, Fred is a really good character. And I guess I believe that his name is Captain Fred. And just the adventures they've gotten to go on so far have been really, really cool. You know, I've really enjoyed them. Um, I'm kind of glad these books got re-released because if they hadn't, I probably never would have read them in the first place. That's just the reality. You know, it's just the way it is. Uh, the entire four series is like Space Cat is the first one. Space Cat vin visits Venus is the second one. Then there's Space Cat Meets Mars. I think the last one is Space Kittens, I think is what it's called. Or it's Space Cat and the Space Kittens, something like that. So that's, I believe, like, you know, the final book in the series. Um, and yeah, it's just like, I think if you're a cat person, you should absolutely read this, read this series. Um, if you're looking for a fun little sci-fi book to read, I'd recommend it. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a fascinating little story, like little series of books. It really is. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of bummed there's only four of them. I kind of wish there had been more. But uh, what I've read of it so far, I've really, really enjoyed it. It's just kind of been like it's each one's taking me on a fascinating, fun little journey. Um, and like I said, like you get to see kind of some things you wouldn't expect, like uh, to see on some of these different planets, right? Just the way it is. And it's always been Flyball who's been the explorer so far. And Flyball, you know, is just this simple cat, you know, who knows that he's important. He knows that he's, you know, getting to do this before anyone else. He's kind of the first cat on some of these planets. And uh, him and Fred get along really well. Uh, they kind of have a little partnership at this point. By the third book, they see each other as partners. It's not like Flyball goes, hey, you know, I'm your boss. And, you know, you get to do what I do and make me, you know, happy and help me do what I want to do. No, he at this point, he realizes, okay, we're partners in this. You know, we've gotten to travel two planets together so far. Uh, we're going to end up traveling a third unexpectedly and exploring it. And, you know, he sees him as more of a friend and a companion and a partner, not just, you know, someone who takes care of me and feeds me and, you know, and uh, bends to my every will, right? That's not what he sees him as anymore. And in the first book, he kind of did seem that way. 
So yeah, so this book uh, got re-released recently. I believe you can find it on like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and places like that. Um, October seventeenth, and the final book in this series, I believe, is going to come out sometime this month. So yeah, I highly recommend that series. Uh, check it out. I think it's good for you know young readers. I think it's good for you know just like cat lovers, sci-fi lovers, and people want to read a fun little story that isn't superbly long. Like I said, it's only about maybe eighty to hundred something pages. So yeah, it's an absolutely fun book. I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to reading the next one in the series. So other than that, uh, that's all we have for you this episode. I hope you had had as much fun as I had and uh, we will definitely talk again real soon with more sci-fi news. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program